November. No matter the outcome, we will elect our 47th chief executive. But first, we're going to take a look back at how the presidents became president. This is your countdown to 47. We now look to old Buck, James Buchanan. Prior to becoming the 15th president, Buchanan practiced law in Pennsylvania, and in 1814, Buchanan was elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Buchanan urged patriots to defend the nation after the burning of Washington, D.C. in the War of 1812. Buchanan himself would join a militia and serve in the Battle of Baltimore, fending off British advancement. In 1821, Buchanan became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, where he served for 10 years. Buchanan was later appointed by President Andrew Jackson to serve as the U.S. Minister to Russia. Following his time in Russia, Buchanan was elected to the United States Senate, where he spent the next decade of his life. In 1844, Buchanan would run for president, but he lost the Democratic nomination to James K. Polk. In 1845, Buchanan was named as President Polk's Secretary of State, where he played a hand in negotiating the Treaty of Oregon in 1846. In 1852, Buchanan ran for the high office once again, but lost the nomination to Franklin Pierce. Pierce, upon becoming president, would appoint Buchanan as U.S. Minister to Britain, where Old Buck would push for the purchase of Cuba, but that ultimately failed. In 1856, Buchanan would run for president one more time. Due to his service abroad, as well as his absence during domestic controversies like Bleeding Kansas, Buchanan was able to secure the Democratic nomination for president. The general election would see three prominent candidates. Buchanan faced off with challenger John C. Fremont of the newly founded Republican Party, as well as former President Millard Fillmore running for the American Party and what remained of the Whig Party. Buchanan won the election. The office he had long sought was now his, but he'd soon find the job was not what he wanted it to be. Just two days after Buchanan took office, the United States Supreme Court handed down one of its most infamous rulings, the Dred Scott decision. The decision stated that enslaved people did not have any rights under the U.S. Constitution and that Congress had no right to ban slavery in federal territories. This decision pleased Southerners and incensed Northerners. Buchanan unwisely sought to remedy the tension by pushing for Kansas to become a slave state. This only angered Republicans and caused backlash from within his own party. Crisis after crisis embroiled Buchanan's time in office, such as the economic panic of 1857 and John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry in 1859, where 16 people were killed. Tensions were at an all-time high, and by the election of 1860, the Democratic Party split in two, each nominating their own candidate, none of whom were Buchanan. A four-way contest ensued, and Republican candidate Abraham Lincoln won the most electoral votes of any candidate, but had less than 40% of the total popular vote. In response, southern states threatened secession while Buchanan pushed for compromise. With no compromise in sight, South Carolina seceded from the Union in December of 1860. The states of Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas would all secede before Buchanan left office, with more to follow to eventually become the Confederate States of America. James Buchanan served as President of the United States from 1857 to 1861. The Union was torn asunder, and it was now up to incoming President Abraham Lincoln to handle the worst crisis the nation has ever seen, the Civil War. I'm Eric George for Valley News Live, and this has been your countdown to 47.